As a disclaimer, Monster Fuckers Anonymous is indeed about wanting to love and have sex with monsters, but we want to make things extremely clear from the get-go. Not all of the chosen monsters will be sapient, but we will not be endorsing zoophilia or bestiality. We will be as transparent and ethical as possible, while also sex positive and mostly having fun. Vampires that stalk in the night, werewolves that howl to the moon, dragons that loom over the skies. These monsters and more have plagued mortals for millennia, clouding our minds with one singular thought. Can we fuck them? Fiction or reality, which one should we be? Don't think that I'm that naive to see. The fiction or reality of things you've done to me. Now all this stupid shit is on repeat. And all. Welcome back to another fantastic, wonderful, stupendous episode of MFA, aka Monster Fuckers Anonymous, a show where we talk about monsters, talk about the lore, talk about the media representation, and right on a scale of 1 to 10, well, not you. Yes, you listening right now, soaking up the sun on a little rock, eating on some flies, doing a little <laughs> on some flies, whether or not you should be having sex with those monsters. I am your colorful creature consultant cleric, and with me, as always, is our technical analyst, our technical sucking themselves, Joe. Men who were raised by their moms, men who were raised by their dads, men who were raised by flies. That's a- <laughs> men who were raised by flies. Ooh, baby, you already know. <laughs> you already know who it is. Joe, how are we feeling today? You got a cigarette in hand? I do. <laughs> it's my first MFA cigarette. Yeah. It's just, sometimes life, yeah. Life just hits you different. And sometimes the topic is so saucy, you need to light a cigarette about it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Just like making love to mm-hmm. your cold-blooded stone Never. body. So who? So what are you talking about? What are we talking about today? We're talking about the reptilian lovers today, finally. Which, so we're finally doing a little bit of scaly love, which I am most, I lean more towards the scaly end That's of true. the furry uh, spectrum. Not dragons. Dragons was a completely separate episode. We're strictly spicky, sticking with reptile-like monsters. Now, Joe, what do you think brings the attraction to these uh, scaly beasts? I don't know. Maybe it's just something because, um, to talk about reproductive uh, systems again, um, reptiles and amphibians will have the oviparous uh, reproductive system, so they lay eggs strictly. And I think we're always going to be really interested when it comes to like, can a lizard have my baby? Oh, Oh, yeah. And can a lizard put their eggs in me? Yeah, very much that vibe. I think we're not even three minutes into the fucking recording. Not to exclusively bring it up to that, but you know, the two of us breeding kinks, whatever. Um, I mean, just a casual thing you bring up on the first date. I think with a lizard (laughs) person, it might be the case. It might be like if like if you're at a a marriageable kid having age, you might want to be like, so, hey, I got eggs. They work a little bit differently than yours. I want you to come on the egg. And then you'll be the father of 10 10 to 15 beautiful children that mostly look like me. uh, So. I would have to add on a bit, for me at least, as somebody who leans more towards the scaly scale Mm -hmm. there, Mm -hmm. it's that I like just the look of reptiles in general. I'm a big fan of iguanas. I love iguanas, my favorite animal. And it's kind of just like the scale of things, the dichotomy of something so cold yet being so warm towards you, I think is very hot. I also just like, uh, there's a lot of cool designs of reptiles. That's true. Reptiles have such cool designs that they can be put onto like the state of their uh, scales. A lot of different biomes that they live in, ways that they can protect themselves. It's a lot of variety. And I think it's much more realistic. It's much easier to lean towards that than it is towards like the more animalistic or more bestial side. Because sure, everyone wants to fuck like a hot werewolf. Cool. But that's a wolf. That's basic. A lamia, snake woman wrapping, coiling around. There's so much more variety Who and interest kids? there. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> kids are fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. So that's like at least. Teacher. <laughs> so that's where I lean more towards at least the scaly scale of things. Scaly scale, scaly scale, scaly scale, scaly scale, scaly scale, scaly scale. Sorry, I said that like four times. Which is why it's so interesting to me. So, Joe, you've brought a little scaly beast that you mm-hmm. want to talk about. I've brought a reptile monster that I want to talk mm-hmm. about. And we do have a user question that we're going to answer here during the call. Just something to, like, answer, get some, do some uh, charity work that we're obligated to do. Charity work that we're obligated to do. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Charity. Yeah. So, so, bitch, why don't you go first, bitch? First of all, I don't like how you referred to me. Little like that. bitch, why don't, don't you go first? Don't poach your cigarette at me when you say that. You're going to get ash in my eyes. Stop bitch. it. Stop it. Anyways, I've chosen a kind of a staple reptile person from a franchise. In, in fact. One that is in the name itself. The. The Reptile from Mortal Kombat series Reptile. Beginning his debut as just a palette swap of Scorpion and Sub-Zero, Reptile has taken a life of his own. A monstrous assassin to Shang Tzu, the last of his race, a conqueror, a loser. This acid-spitting creature has suffered some of the greatest highs and lows of the Mortal Kombat series. But no matter the timeline, Reptile is always lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike. Mortal Kombat is confusing. The epic highs and lows of American oh, football. The epic highs and lows of Mortal Kombat loser dumb. So, loser bracket. Loser. Okay. He is the loser bracket. So there's a notorious thing pre Mortal Kombat. I think one is the uh, is the game itself. But pre Mortal Kombat one, or the newest timeline, Reptile is known as a series as the loser. Reptile has never won a fight in all of Mortal Kombat. Canonically, he has never won. Damn, bitch. What a loser. Yeah. So in the pre-timeline, or in the pre-MK1, he is the sometimes the last of his race. Sometimes he is from a planet that's been conquered by Shang, uh, Shang Tzu, um, Shao Kong, mm-hmm. uh, and has been kind of as a servant to work for Shang Tzu and kind of serves Shao uh, Serves whoever won. It is kind of just this like assassin. He's super sneaky, super like monstrous. He sometimes has the appearance of a human, but the further he is away from his queen, he becomes more monstrous and reptilian. And he's kind of just like very petty back then, where he's just like, hey, uh, you're not Shang Tzu. You're not this person. So you don't have right to rule. I only serve this person in our world. So he's kind of like just like a loser. He's a lackey. But the reason that I wanted to bring him up today is because, because you love to fuck losers. Well, that is correct. That and what did we correct. what did we learn from the Green Knight? Don't let my wife fuck a loser. Don't let my so. wife fuck a loser. But I'm not. My wife isn't fucking a loser. I'm fucking the loser. There's a difference. Okay. 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 So it's I'm your not. Fault. I'm, I'm not focused on the, on the loser portion of okay. Okay. Sh- of uh, reptile because MK1 does something because t- Mortal Kombat has a bunch of random timelines. They have timeline shifts where That's, somebody goes back in time, yeah. shifts the entire trajectory of the game and everything. In the latest version of the game. Uh, one of the characters has gone back and remade the entire universe and created a brand new timeline. What and in the this, fuck? Yeah, it's weird. But in this timeline, Reptile has gone a complete 180 and is living his best fucking life, to be honest. So in this version, Reptile is from a same same race of, I think they're called the Targon. No, the Targon. It's a Terrans. There's a Terrans. So Targon is a diff- is Baraka. So he comes from a race of uh, the Terrans. They're lizard people. But he has a condition where he can shapeshift into a human. And so he's been, ca- he's been cast out because all the other Zetarian are straight lizard people. And they're like, you're a fucking mm-hmm. freak. You're a freak. Oh no, oh no. You're a oh, freak. No. And, they oh, kick- no. and so they kick him out and he wanders around. He joins a circus and he ends up doing this act of like where he turns into a human and back to lizard. And everyone's like, oh my God, great. Shang Tzu sees this and he's like, you know what? You're mine now. I have your circus family captured. God, you work for damn. me. And now you're going to teach me how to do your shapeshifting stuff which is pretty cool. And then you're just going to work for me and be my lackey. So he does for a while trying to protect his family. Turns out uh, when the main char- when the story starts and all the main characters come by, Reptile's like, I actually hate this dude so fucking much. He sucks. I'll help you guys escape if you help me rescue my family. And then Shang Tzu comes out of nowhere and is like, I actually had your family dead this entire time. Oh my bitch. God. I, you're, you're, you're wasted potential now. I already know I got your skills, so die. Reptile helps them all escape. He helps the main story go about, like, rescues a whole bunch of people. Gets a girlfriend. Okay. In the middle, who is an angel demon. Demonic angel mix. Gets a girlfriend. And then, like, as the story progresses and we get to the end of the canonical ending, he ends up becoming an ambassador to his people. When he goes back, he expects to be, like, shunned. But they're like, yo, you're the best. Thank you for getting, like, our queen loves you. You helped rescue that. Amazing. Okay. This is where we're going to have to, we're going to have to make an editing choice here. Okay. Truly. There is a eugenics portion of this. Well, I, I understood. I understand. Which is that Reptile 
whose real name is Sizok. He goes okay. by his first name, is Sizok. We can Thank God. That. We don't he have to it. just call him what yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. His true name is Sizok. Finds out that his people, or for some reason, there's been a practice of whenever a person of his race is born that has the ability to shift from human to animal, they kill the baby. No. And so he's just like, I want to stop this practice 1,000% and figure out who started this shit. Who did that? So we can cut that portion out if you want to. No, that's a good portion. That's a that's, uh, that's great context for me. So we, that's his new mission, and that's all post-game. Like We might find out more of the follow-up to the story post in the next game when they continue the storyline. Mm-hmm. But that's where he's at. He is an ambassador now. He is loyal. He's a baby. He's a baby face. Like uh, in WWE terms, he's a baby face. He's on a complete like heel turn. He's like super sweet, but he's um he has a girlfriend, a little angel demon girlfriend. Wow. So Joe, what do you think? Uh, what like what a wonderful like complete one eighty from like a loser to like someone who just genuinely like that truly is like Joe character becomes fully actualized mm-hmm. like person like because yeah. because I you said. He was just a skin choice for Scorpion and Sub Zero. Correct. So, cannot like in the game wise, he was a palette swap. So they were right. like, you can use both of Scorpion and Sub Zero skills in the, I think it was the first or second game with Reptile, and that's what they just called him because he was red and like red and yellow. Oh, not red, yellow. Uh, yellow and blue makes green, and so they were like, that's Reptile. And from then on, they started developing that character from there as he that's became cool. like a lizard assassin. That's really fun. He kind of became the circus Robin. I don't. I can't remember which Robin that he was. What the Dick, circus Dick, Robin? Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson. Yeah. Like there's that's like a, there's like a fun. There's always like a, a guy who's a freak goes to the circus. Like that's just all he, that he feels that he can do. And yeah, God, so we love this. Is Sizok right now? I'm gonna send a picture into the chat. Please do. Uh, this is his actual lizard form. So that's what he truly looks like. I'd come on his eggs. Oh, for sure. And then here... <laughs> yeah. Uh, here is his human form that he shapeshifts into occasionally when he wants to. Okay. I'll put it here. And that's up to him. That's up to him. He he stays in his human form because it's kind of just like easier to walk around and do things. Oh, for sure. I uh, like it less. All right. Yeah, he's got like sna- like lizard tail tattoos all over. I'm going to talk about some features of him just as for context because I, like, I'd like to provide context. He is, he does have acid blood. That's awesome. He is, like, if you get acid blood on him, he will, like, get melt your, you know, he will melt you. <laughs> and so he does have a bunch of those kind of issues. But other than that, he is pretty, like, this new reptile is a sweet little guy. Sweet little guy. Yeah. I'm enjoying this. Would you want me to paint a picture for you what I think? Of course. I th- and you're going to do it regardless. So just I was. I was 100% yeah, yeah, going to do yeah, it regardless. Yeah, yeah. So I imagine that this is some guy you knew in high school. Uh, <sighs> was was the loser. Was the absolute loser. Like a fucking yeah. incel type shit. Like he was a loser, lame, like constantly got eggs on him, like spilled on him. Oh, God. People like, but he wasn't like he was like, oh, I feel bad for him. He's like, no, he says some things. He kind of deserves it. This is 100% a loser. But he always got back up. Yeah, he tried. He like kept like he kept moving through the motions. And so you move on. You have like your 10-year high school reunion. 10 or 20-year high school reunion. Oh, my God. They do that. You do both. You do 10 yeah, or 20 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, well, we're like really sealing. See, we're seeing the full scope of we're this guy. The and, full like, scope. And, and that's true because there's multiple games, multiple generations. Yeah, multiple. And the, the whole different timeline. How things change and move and shift. So, so we're in a different timeline. We're in a different timeline. 10-year reunion. 10-year reunion. <laughs> Of high school. You go yeah. there, you're kind of just like meeting these old people that you've known and just like you've mm-hmm. seen how people change. And then you see this yeah. like super hot guy in the corner. And you're like, I we definitely didn't go to high school he's with that guy. He's kind of broody. Yeah, he's kind of like he's shy, but he's like Tattooed kind of just like got up. a drink. And he's you got a drink, you go over to him, you kind of just like, Hey, like I don't uh, did you go to the school? It's like, Yeah, I did. Remember me? I'm Sizok. I'm Sizok, the guy who like pissed his pants in front of everybody in school. <laughs> that guy who like everyone dumped a milk on and thought it was funny. Everyone waterboarded me. I was I was waterboarded in high school when everyone was kind of chill with it. You're like, oh my God, size like you look amazing. I was like, what do you do? He's like, yeah, I realized the error of my ways and decided to go into charity work. And now I run a nonprofit. Circus. Nonprofit circus. <laughs> a nonprofit circus for trained animals to like release them back into the wild like elephants. 
And you're so just what like, you oh. so what you said was not <laughs> it was not good. What what do you mean? You said a, a, a circus for no animals? no 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 a circus nonprofit to return circus animals to the wild like okay elephants. great got it got it got it. okay good good because good, you're not okay. supposed to have elephants anymore. No, you're no. not supposed to. No. If you have an elephant in your circus, we're calling. Bring him, take him back. We take got him you. Back. We got we you. got take you. Him. We got Booked. take him. Back. Yeah, put it put it back on the plane. Give him some peanuts. Put him on a plane. First class. Only peanuts. Only peanuts. First class. And you send him out on a plane back to where they can be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've heard about Sizox efforts like on the news and everything. Yeah, you're like, holy shit. And he's like, yeah, I really was realized I was a piece of shit in high school. And I kind of yeah. wanted to like change and be better. And I'm trying to. Like, I'm slowly trying to be better and do all these new improvements. And you're like, wow, thank you so much. Like, that's amazing. Anyways... What's new with you? Like, what are you trying to do? And he's like, well, respectfully, I like to blow your back out. Yeah. yeah. And so you go back and he's like, his tongue is fucking electric because mm-hmm. his tongue can go out his fucking body. Mm-hmm. Like he licks you all up and down all over. So true. And you just got your new, uh, your new boyfriend, your new partner that just fucking gives your head like tongue game go wild. What do you think, Joe? What do you think about that little scenario? I'll cock I'm, for us. I'm in. I'm down. I'm 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 very happy with the trope of like was a loud, disgusting kid, and now is just the most like calm adult ever, or like the most like now has foundational, fundamental beliefs and like actually yeah. carries through them. Like this is just like a you know genuinely solid, solid relationship choice as uh, well. Yeah. Because okay, he has, because I, I can show you a picture of his girlfriend right now. Yes, please. This is his angel demon girlfriend. I forget her name, but it's, here she is. Oh, she's cute. Yeah. She's a little freaky looking, but that, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Her name's Asura. Asura. Yeah, but she's an angel demon thing with celestial powers. Sick as hell. No, her name is Ashra. 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 My bad. I Google lied to me. Anyways, Joe, I think I've built up enough here for us to get, drive into the spread scale. What are you saying? What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. All Let's right. get sex appeal. I mean, bo- lizard form. He's kind of chunky, and by that I mean like he's he's like a blocky lizard. He is a blocky lizard. I was like, you making fun of his weight? Like what's? <laughs> yeah, I'm body shaming. One hundred percent. No, yeah, definitely. Obviously, we're here for mostly for the monster form. Yes, um, and it is kind. I mean, what mon? Well, not monster hearts. What Mortal Kombat does is like the art style has obviously changed just throughout generations and i think mm-hmm. what they're focusing now on is like the very like a body horror visceral like how do you make a four-armed guy look just absolutely anatomically correct to the point that it's distressing visually yeah yeah 100%. um so we are very much getting like this is what a man would look like if he were oh, this is what a lizard would look like if it were a man yeah um which is like cool but i think it does lend itself for too much almost too much realism which is really funny it's like a fine design. It really doesn't jump out at me as anything interesting because he's just kind of like, he's not even green or like a funky kind of like orange situation. Like he's fine. He's he just, just kind of looks like a desert lizard, which is like, okay. But like, um, yeah, he's, he's, I'm going to have to give him a seven. Yeah. With his monstrous form, I'm not the biggest fan of. I've seen better ones. Yeah. So I'm going to give it yeah, I think I'll give it a seven as well. I think I'll echo that. Cool. Now it's a personality. He's he's new. He was a loser. Took a tide. Turned the tide. Turned the tide. We've managed to shift away from loser reptile into caring, trusting reptile who wants to do right by the world. Exactly. Who wants to do right by his people, who wants to do right by others, who wants to do right just in general and wants to be accepted and loved. Don't you want to be accepted and loved? Hmm? No. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, my bad. My bad. My yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Give, give me a second with the people, real quick. Give me a second. Go, go, go. Look at look look in the corner, real quick. All while right. I talk to the people. Hey, people. Don't you want to be loved and accepted? I know you do. I I want to be loved and accepted. And sometimes that's what. Sorry, Joe is like getting fucking cigarettes out next to me, just like in my fucking ear. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> Anyways. I think this is pretty high. I'm going to give this a nine. I don't know about nine. I have to be honest. Okay. Um, what, are, what are your apprehensions here? My apprehension is just, we all know a blooming hero when we see one. 
one that's very busy, one that is now very much like in it for the long haul kind of thing. That doesn't mean that the personality is bad, Mm -hmm. but like it is a possibility for the personality to get boring. Okay. You you think caring for others is boring? A little bit. Really? No. <laughs> I think that there's like a there's gonna be there's a compromise here where it's like, is Reptile gonna take care of himself at some point? Is Reptile he gonna does. be able? He does. I mean, he mm-hmm. he's doing things for his people, but he also is maintaining a relationship, as we know. And you know, that takes some time. And he's like everyone that takes boundaries and communication. And just you can do two things at once. You can care for your people and take time to hang out with your friends, your movie star friend, Johnny Cage. Oh no! Is there is is Johnny Cage really? I don't, I don't believe that they're do you friends. Want, do you want actual? I mean, technically, he hangs out. They talk. <sighs> Johnny Cage is the worst. We're gonna give it an eight point five. It's definitely around. It's like it's a great guy, great personality. Okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll accept that relationship potential. Like I said, he's dating somebody. Like we said, past past Isaac. You know what? I'll say this: past reptile. No loser. He did hook up with somebody before, and he had like sex with them, whatever. So yeah, cool. Sizok, right now, that's a man you want to lock down. That's, that's a man that you want to lock down. That's a marriage potential right there. I'll give this a ten out of ten. I think so. I think I think it'll be a ten out of ten. All right. Encounter chance. Now this is where we get a little bit iffy. There is only one of him. It is just him, and he is one of the preemptive fighters and ambassadors for the Mortal Kombat and Outworld. Mm -hmm. so it might be a bit tougher to interact with him, but he usually is out on the street, like, fighting people and doing things. Yeah. So I would give this, like, a four. There is a, there's usually a martial arts tournament that happens once a, like, like, once a year to decide the fate of Outworld. So you can encounter If we were Mortal Kombat characters, I want to ask this question maybe a bit later, but, like, what would even... Why the fuck would we be there? Would we just be like announcers, like Twitch streamers? Like, no, we, yeah. I think we'd just be like people watching in Outworld. Like, there's regular people, like, there's Earthrealm, there's, which there's is like us. an audience. Yeah, isn't there's, there? yeah, there's an audience that's usually like look in. So there's Earthrealm, that's us. And then there's Outworld, which is like the mystical lands of things. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we can exist in either or, in, in either or, if you want to be from Outworld, you can exist in there and look through. Or you can be from the human realm, and that can also interact with the with Mortal Kombat things. But you could also, like you said, we could watch, we could observe things. We can be a little groupy fucker. Yeah, we could be groupies. It, and then there's like the circus portion. I feel like this is probably a five. Okay, I think five is pretty fair. So we can then dive into death risk. Death risk is pretty high. They did a is series it? called Mortal Kombat. There's fatalities that eat you and that's like true murder. there's a cannibals yeah and they're all warriors who face death so they're all willing to like fight and murder and things like that so yeah. i would say honest to god pretty high i would give this a four i feel like though we gave him such solid personality scores obviously that doesn't have anything to do with the two of us shit personalities but that doesn't affect more or less our ability to kill people because there's skill, and he does have the skill. All Mortal yes. Kombat characters will have the skill, ultimately. He also has acid blood. He does have acid blood. One cut, he's making you some food. Oh, no. Ow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a lot of scarring. But what's not, what's not love, if not some scarring? Mutual what's scarring. love? Not a Got to do with scarification. Okay. Um, with a second hand emotion. I'm going to give it a five. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. All right, Joe. With the numbers all set, it's I think it's time for us to engage in some Mortal Kombat. I'm going to kill you. If I kill you first, uh, bitch. <gasps> I don't know how, again, we always all our conflicts always end up in a tie. But also, yeah. someone reset the timeline so we're both alive. So, hey, it is what it is. A win is a win. Joe, what's this timeline scores? Okie dokie. So, Cleric with a 6.8 for Reptile, Joe with a 7.1, and our double average for Reptile goes to a splat 7. Okay, pretty high. I'm with it. I'm excited. That's so good for me. That puts him in the upper range. 
Buffer range puts it at point one above Hot Rod. Ooh, okay. Beat out Transformers. Let's go. I'm surprised that Mortal Kombat character got that high. I don't think any other Mortal Kombat character will get higher than that. Fur Fur, the Demon Prince is at a 7.1, and Garrus is at a 7.2. Ah, oh, I love Garrus. My scaly boys existing high is really makes me happy. Mm-hmm. But now you know that time is. The phone is a ringing. It's a ringing, a dinging, a binging, a linging, a singing. Joe, should we pick up this phone? Yeah, I guess. Go for it. Go. You know what? This time you can pick it up. Wow, really? Yeah. Thanks. Just don't fuck it up. Oh God, I almost accepted the call before you said that. Okay. Hello. Well, hi there, Monster Folks and OS. I got a quick question for you. Yeah, what's up? So I have myself this beautiful, stunning, a spectacular. Didn't you, didn't you call like two episodes ago? No, no, not me. Maybe not me. Who knows? Anyways, I have this beautiful, beautiful reptilian lover. She is a Medusa. And my God, she makes she makes my heart pitter patter, skitter scatter. The problem is, they won't let me sleep in the bed with them during the winter because they need a heat lamp. Because, you know, my body heat is not hot enough. But so they need to stay constantly warm. The problem is, my electric bill is through the roof and I cannot afford that. We are in a bustling economy that does not work. And I'm plumbed all out of solutions. What do you think, MFA? What can I do to make sure my, my scaly lover is hot and heavy, but also my bills and my pockets are light? I'm going to have to call you back. I'm going to have to call you back. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm going to, we'll, 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 I'll bring you to my other representative in a, in a second. Take okay, your bye. time. Wow. Cleric, our viewers are pores. <laughs> Damn. Get your money up, viewers. What the fuck? Get your money up, not your funny up, Dante. <laughs> okay, so realistically, hopefully your Medusa lover, or Medusa, rather, mm-hmm. is uh, good to say that she's out and dating again, I guess. Yeah. Um, she sh- Does she not have a job? She should be contributing to most of this yeah, electric bill. It's like, first of all, if you are living together at a certain point, there should be some equal reciprocation. A life portion yeah. size Even if she's- heat lamp. That or if she's coming over often enough, it's like, hey, this leap leap lamp, while I love you and I'm willing to do this for you, I do need something in return, like just to help out because this is very expensive. My bills are getting high. I know there's some people who are like, they want their partner to be the full provider for them or a majority provider for them. But at a certain point when it, the bills are getting to the $1,300, $1,500 for nah. like electrical, I think at a certain point, you got to contribute a bit. And if not, if that ends up being a problem, you can also find more, I would say, holistic solutions to keep your partner warm. Like what, Cleric? Heat rocks. Or get a heated blanket. Uh, but but the pure force of the sun. Rely on solar energy. Oh, actually, speaking of something, you can get solar energy. Get solar, solar. panel. You get solar panels, which help you get off the grid a little bit. You tr- uh, take that solar panels. That heat itself can be used for the lamp in the later nights. But you do have to move to a place that allows for solar panels. Most places are. Yeah, most places But if you're renting, shit out of luck. Solar panels is a solution. I would say hot rocks, getting that. Or maybe just taking a shower together. You know, a hot, steamy shower. But then the water bill. True, it doesn't change the water bill solution. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean... Get rich. Get rich, that's one. Or two, maybe if you... Do the beast with two backs enough, you can warm up, you know? That builds up a lot of sweat and activity and heat. But it's the sleeping. Okay, that's true. It's the the sleeping. It's the after effects there. I would say there's some top-of-the-line weighted blankets that can help keep you warm. An Ikea comforter. That shit is... Ikea comforter. Get a partnership with Ikea. First first thing. First step. First up, partner with Ikea. Second step, get one of their comforters. Third, profit. I don't think there's any... Loss of profit. The, not loss of profit. That comforter, I have an Ikea comforter. That's the only thing I use. That shit keeps me warm no matter the weather. Cleric, are you a reptile? Oh, no. Anyways, so yeah, there's a couple other solutions you could do. Solar powder pattern, but also I think communication with your partner and saying, hey, we got to afford this bill together. You're a Medusa. I know you have gold somewhere. Yeah, that's true. You do have gold. You've killed multiple people by... um Turning them into stone. I would love to see some of the treasure. I'd love to see just some something come my way. Just to yeah. help out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let us know if that works, viewer. And if you're not turned to stone by the time you get an answer, we'll know. Ultimately, if you're just not doing the most that you can for Medusa, you got a loser. Yeah. 
So that is it. Or move to, oh, actually, wait, we haven't even thought of this. Move to somewhere warm. Wait a second. Move we to Arizona. Yeah, we didn't think of the, the obvious solution of just move somewhere warm. Uproot your entire life and leave behind your family and friends. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, do that. Move to Arizona. Move, move into to... a beautiful little maze in New Mexico. And your home will be at the center. And then all of her food will be the people who attempt to burglarize your home. Mm-hmm. How about that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bars. There's your solution, Beer. There's your solution. Move, make more money, or communicate. The hardest one being communication. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Medusa, what sort of environment have you created now? Medusa. Medusa. Wow. Nosferatu. All right, Joe, now that we've answered your phone real quick. Oh, shit. I spilled coffee. Oh, fuck. I spilled the coffee all over the desk. Fuck. I'm so sorry. I spilled it all over your pick. I, I, I think it's just completely legible now. The coffee I just spilled all over your papers. Oh, no. So fuck. I guess we'll just cover off with the mistake that I made because I... I absolutely chose Randall from Monsters Inc. And we already did that in season one. Um, yeah, no, it's because I stole coffee, not because uh, you didn't read any of our I made messages. A and, they, oh, no, and I forgot that we already did it. Listen, Kess has great taste. What can I say? Yeah. All right. Well, Joe, what is this new pick that you definitely didn't spend 20 my to 30 minutes thinking? Pick, yeah. My original pick. That you didn't spend 20 to 30 minutes no. trying to figure out. Yeah. My pick for my side of the cold-blooded bodies is Yamata no Orochi. What the fuck is that? I'll tell you. Oh! Yamata no Orochi is an eight-headed, eight-tailed snake beast. Eyes and belly red from crawling atop the bloody riverbed of maiden sacrifices. If a daughter is not offered up to the beast every year... He will flood the river. When he is eventually slain, addled by strong rice wine, a sword was found deep within his belly. Joe, how would you fill me in on more information here? What is this legend from? Where, what is the origin here? So this is Japanese origin. This specifically is more of a tool, honestly, that leads to Suzano eventually getting back into the good graces of his wife, Amaterasu, after he is exiled. And truly what's the most important part of Yamata no Orochi is that the, the fact that he has a sword with a fantastic name inside of him. Nice, nice. So a little MacGuffin. Have, oh, yes. So what I have brought to you is, you know, instead of like a, a great retelling and tragic story of one who came from nothing and then you go to a high school reunion or something and then you find out in another universe or timeline that he's like a fantastic hero now. I bring to you someone who is just truly the bully of a single village who has the immense and elemental capacity to drown and flood an entire village if he does not get to eat a beautiful woman by the end of the year. Okay. And you know gets tricked by very, very strong rice wine. Where are the positives here? So he has eight heads. That's a lot of head. He has eight tails. That's a lot of tails. And he's absolutely covered in blood. That's more of a speculation if on that's, my part. If that's by choice or is that like... It's, it, it would absolutely be by choice. It's definitely the type of villain who is like kind of mob bossy, like lays back and like, has however we interpret the like eight head eight tail thing in mm-hmm. terms of like a single forms person single person's form rather yeah is a guy who purposefully puts the blood of like a woman that he just killed and like leaves it purposefully on himself okay um all right i'm i'm building something in my brain here i'm building up uh a character to to paint a picture with but i want mm-hmm. is there anything else you want to add before i start painting this picture and inside of him, he has a sword. <laughs> you forgot about that part. You didn't forget about it. I heard it the first time. The, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This okay. the cool ass sword that's inside of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. This is a lot to take in, Joe. <laughs> Christ. You've basically described, you know what? Let's go back to this. Let's go back to our high school reunion here. Uh huh. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go back to the scenario. And you've just finished talking to the incel loser that yeah. has glowed up to be this charitable, amazing man. Mm-hmm. And as you're like, hey, I'm gonna go get a drink and I want to come back and keep talking, you go to the corner and you notice somebody else. You notice 
the bully who used to bully sweet old incel Sizar, Sizak. And there he is. And he used to be like super buff and super cool, even at like a middle, like as like a high schooler is like buff and cool. Like first want to get a mustache as a high school, as yeah. a freshman. The, the, the snake. Yeah. Yeah. And so you turn, you look at him and you're like, oh my God, is that Bradley? Is that Orochi? And you see Bradley? I, I don't know. I was making up a name. I didn't want to like, you look at him and he is covered, in, well, just like size, like covered in tattoos, but not tattoos of like cool snake designs. It's of all his exes and they're just yeah. crossed out every time he gets a new mm-hmm. one. Like he gets the mm-hmm. tattoo name of like, and there's like one arm is just filled with like te- like Texas. He's still like buff. He's still like, like built. He still goes to the gym and all that kind of stuff. But it's like this most dude bro like bad boy. I know this motorcycle guy isn't good for me type thing. But in the yeah. worst sense of like, I know this isn't like, good for me. You got like mutton chops type thing. How you been? I remember we used to like rule the school around here. Remember like when you used to be kind of into me back when we were in high oh, school and no. you kind of just like, yeah. And he's like, I still have that cool ride. You know, the cool motorcycle I called like uh, the sword. Still got it. Stay with me. So what's, what's with all the uh, crosses out of these women on your body? Oh, oh, you know, they just like, I fall in love and they break my heart. And, you know, I just and like, I kill watch, them. Well, well, they kill me emotionally. Uh, uh, and then you kill them physically? No, emotionally. I make it so they can't trust anyone ever again. <laughs> oh my God. And that's a, that is the vibe, right? Yeah. That is uh, unfortunately the vibe. And he kind of just like, no one can really talk to him because his dad is still like powerful. Like his family is still very like powerful. Like he's, mm-hmm. You know, he's part of a motorcycle gang. He's like joined like a long-standing family tradition of being part of like a motorcycle sure, gang. Sure, sure, the sure, other sure. like the eight heads, you know, we'll call it that. The eight heads. And so he's like has a branching thing, but that's kind of who this guy is. He's not sweet. He wants stuff from you. He's like, hey, if you want to get through to me, like maybe give me a little kissy kissy if you want to get out of the way. Yeah. It's just this not a good guy. He and is the only the only cool thing about him is his sword, which is his motorcycle. The, uh, the fact that Yamata no Orochi has eight heads and eight tails. And perhaps there are maybe more stories that are beyond his death and killing maidens. Perhaps yeah. not. It's funny. It's like one of those mythological tales that are just like, is he only cool because he has eight heads and eight tails? Yeah. Like, like what else is kind of going on? It's one of those and- things where in mythology, sometimes monsters are just obstacles. There's nothing else about them yes. that makes them anything interesting. Even though they're so pervasive in legends that I know I know there's a whole bunch of different creatures that are based off this. Like Orochimaru in Naruto is based off kind of this snake, like the namesake. There is a Digimon. I'm actually posting the picture in the chat right now. There's a Digimon that is literally called Orochimon that is based off this legend that has like th- mm-hmm. a bunch mm-hmm. of metal heads. I used to own a toy of this one. While they may be iconic, sometimes an iconic creature just needs to be an obstacle. It doesn't have to have a personality. It just needs to be rude and mean. Just like how your bad guy doesn't need to have like a tragic backstory. Someone can be bad just to be bad. A monster can just be a monster to be a monster. Yep. And that's kind of where we're at. And that's not a bad thing. This is a hot monster. I think eight heads, eight things to do with, eight things to kiss, eight things to make out with. He's going to fuck and you hard. I'm on the Lord's Wikipedia and the body is covered in like the river's moss. Yeah. Its length extends over eight valleys and eight oh, hills. Oh, that's a big boy. That's and a if big one boy. Looks at its belly. It is all. It is all constantly bloody and inflamed. Just like a. So he works out. Okay. No, you cut, so, that, cut that part. Cut that part. Cut that part. Just cut like that a part. beep. Interesting. Okay. So long, hard, and willing to travel. You know. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to find anything to say. I'm that trying to. Is, that's is, positive. I. This is a bad. This monster. could have honestly been a giant choice as well. True. Well, that brings up the issues with giants, which means it's like, hey, you're a small pebble to this person that really wants to eat you. Yeah. And And sometimes you do want the world's most manipulative, awful person um, who is just like a territorial mob boss over your village and wants to like. And the thing is, he specifically targets this one family's daughters. Um, This family has eight daughters and he's just like, he doesn't want to do anything other than just eat them at the end of the year. And then Susano is literally like, so why are you guys crying? Uh, what's up? At this like yeah. riverbed. And they're like, 
this fucking guy just eat, kiss eating our daughters and he's not asking anyone else to eat their daughters. It's only us. It's like, what did you do? Do that. I Nothing. And then we have our last daughter her, and we don't know what to do. And so then Susanna's like, damn, Su- that sucks. So what Susano does for some reason that everyone was just like super happy about is that he was like, what if I propose to your eighth daughter um, and make her my wife? And like, why? Why is that part okay. necessary? Um, Whatever. Is that going to save my daughter's life from the snake creature? Well, yes. But here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to turn her into a comb and she's going to live in my hair forever. OK, um, I don't know, again, how that saves her. From- so what I need you guys to do is I'm going to need you to build an eight, build eight gates to oh. We have to build something for you. You you have to build eight gates, and then we. I also need you to brew some sake and refine it eight times. Okay. Because apparently there's something. He's like weak to his own number. Like Yamato no Orochi is just for some reason like eight is eight, like eight is the eight, magic number. I guess so. To strike but you he down. Himself. Well, maybe it, it's so that they make sure that he gets all eight heads get yeah. drunk or something. I think that would make sense. Like, yeah, all eight heads have to drink them because if one head is sober, then it can make a decision, like a, a right one. Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay, you want us to make eight gates with eight sakes to, so that you can turn my last yeah, daughter yeah, 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 into yeah. your wife comb. And then she's not part of your family anymore. She's my wife. You know, this makes sense to me. Maybe, honey. You're going to be turned to this man's wife comb. <laughs> yeah. And in Persona 3, 4, and 5, the design for this monster is just iconic and has left me a lasting impression. What is the design? On send me, me. Send me a picture. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. The wife comb thing is throwing me off a lot, I'll be honest. And she also has a design in Persona. She does? Yeah. Her name is Kushi Inada Hime. So this is Yamato no Orochi. Oh, shit. That's pretty good. And then Kushinada Hime, uh, her, her head's a cum. That's dumb. Persona's, her dress is a cum. Persona's dumb. Persona's fun. Persona's dumb. Um, and I, this, there's like an interesting thing here, which there's a lot of parallels to this type of, there's a lot of mythological patterns of this type of story. Like something that I thinking, I'm thinking of immediately is when Daphne begs Gaia or Poseidon or whoever to help her like, leave the chase of Apollo and then she gets turned into a fucking laurel tree. Yeah. Yes. And it's like, how did that help, guys? I guess it's because like Apollo can never, even Apollo by standards, he's not going to fuck a tree. But he's going to for sure make her leave as part of his like decor and fashion style forever. Yeah. It's the, I don't know, anything where it's like, let me turn me into an inanimate object so I can avoid this god's gaze. It's like, it's not really punishing the god, you know? It's not punishing mm-hmm. the person. It's really just so making you be forever as like a painting. It's just kind of just odd. But hey, who are we to talk to ancient mythologies and what they wish and desire? Joe, I think we have enough information to go off to jump into the spread scale. Kes is going to have to learn how to make this one funny. I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> Kes is going to have to figure this shit out. Congrats, Kes. Let's, let's spread. So sex appeal for this. We say it again. Yamata no Orochi. Um, I'm going to give this a pretty high number because I like snakeheads. I like, snake heads. It, I like it's, hydras. It's sexier than reptile. I got to say that. Honestly, yeah. I would give this a nine. I was, I was going to give it an eight, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm for, a big snake fan. I like hydras and, and heads and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give it that. Personality. Fuck no. It's so bad. Fuck it's no. Such, Absolute it the dog worst water. Personality ever. Absolute dog water. Uh, I'm going to give this a one. Just straight fully. up a bully. Yeah, just a bully, weirdo, monster, bad vibes. Not a fan. One. Well, what? Yeah. What? What was that? He's, he's consistent. Consistency he's, is key? He is assertive. He is. Okay. He knows what he wants. Correct. He does want to eat that woman. Um, the multiple women of the family. He does. And I, I think children. maybe he was attracted to this family because they had eight daughters. Uh, that's probably it. Yeah. He's got some problems and ones that I dare not attempt to fix. 1.5. Okay. All right. 1.5. I will give it to you. That's still weird. You're weird. <laughs> You're fucking weird for that. But yes, one, understood. But a 1.5. Relationship potential. Let me know. What do you think? Mm. Huh? The the creature that wants to eat eight daughters from the same family? Mm-hmm. Do you think you can build a loving and lasting relationship? Do you think you can deal with that? Interesting. Um, 
I would say you could make the argument that relationships, when he wants to eat them, he means physically and have like sex with them, eat them carnally, you know? No. No. Okay. He wants to eat them. What? Okay. Like, I tried to give you an out here. No, there's no out. And I know, but he's so sexy. Well, okay. This is sort of a willing sacrifice. I would definitely be the one yeah, that they have down. to be like, when we absolutely need you to sacrifice yourself, yeah. we'll call you, okay? You're, Just You're like, I'll do it right now. I'll go down there right no, now. No, no, we have to wait till the end of the fucking year, Joe. No, 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 Calm I'll go down. right now. Like, I'm free. I'm ready. Put your pants back on. It's weird. I'm just waiting for the day. Um, yeah, we'll give this a one. This is 100% a one. Absolute bottom of the fucking barrel. Honestly, at this point, I'm hoping that it just is gets worse than Ripley at this point. I don't think so because of the nine. The sex yeah, is nine. Right. You're it's, true. it's going to be up there. Um, Encounter chance. He is in a, he's over, actually, this might bring up the score. He is in eight valleys and eight rivers. He's a river. Yeah, exactly. You know exactly like where he is. You know he's where he can be. He's traveling every now and then. And then he makes his presence known because he's so big. It's going to be fairly easy to like spot him or like yeah. know where he is. All he needs to eat, as far as we know anyway. Well, we don't know what he needs to eat throughout the rest of the year because this sacrifice thing is something that like, sates him and like calms him down for the river yeah. who's to say he's an evil guy maybe he just needs the women because it's how he was um <sighs> let's give it a five <laughs> i will give this a four so now we go to death risk yeah so tell me joe do you think there's any world where you survive yeah yeah he's um yeah no no he's... i want you i want i want you to say it i need actually i need you to say it I need you to just flat out admit where you're at right now. Because usually you like to do this thing where it's like, maybe if I was like a cute enough girl. <laughs> no, this ain't going to work here. I want you it's, to fa face the music. It's, um, it's a one. What's that? It's a one. It's a one. No, no, no. I want you to say it loud and proud. It's a one. Mm -hmm. It's a one. Mm -hmm. So Cleric, you're, what's your score? That's what I fucking thought. Uh, it'll also be a one, Joe, because this shit, there's no way you survive. Even if there's, unless you can, one, be as good as Susano to kill this thing to get the magic sword that's in his belly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. two, somehow be convincing and conniving enough to convince this monster not to eat you. That's not happening. It is a one. It's nearly impossible. It is actually impossible. So unfortunately, folks, this is going to be a lot of different scores. Now, Joe, We've done some quick math. We've done some processing. We've done a lot of things. Why don't we build, drink about eight sakes? To the abacus! To the abacus with eight sakes. Except for the snakes! I hate snakes! I had a bad experience with snakes once. Joe, that was a wild fucking eight. I don't know how you were able to drink eight sakes back to back to back. Oh, I didn't drink them. What'd you do with them? I put them up my ass. Just read the numbers. So for Yamato no Orochi, Cleric with a 3.2, Joe with a 3.3, which gives us our loser for this episode, Yamato no Orochi at a 3.3 altogether, rounded down or up, whatever the fuck. It's just um, rounded down. Which is 0.2 below Bill Cipher. Wild. Uh, Smaug. Sad. Predator. And Satan. So oh, something worse than Satan. Something actually worse than Satan, which is kind of funny, honestly. I think that's the epic highs and lows of reptiles, American you know? football. <laughs> actually, football. Fun, fa fun fact, in the Riverdale show, I think there's a gang called like the rept like the Snakeheads or something. Or the Vipers. And, the that's, Vipers. and that's Jughead's like biker weird gang or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just odd, odd things all around. Anyways... Sometimes, just like reptiles, we need to rest to soak up the sun and suck some dick. So, Joe, any final thoughts? <sighs> I wonder how much my electrical bill is going to be this month. Pretty high, seeing <laughs> as I'm going to be laying out in a sun lamp. Uh, God damn it. Anyways, we got to have that set up. So, for all of us here at MFA, I think it's time for us to say a one, a two, a skiddly diddly do. Bye! <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of MFA. 
Your hosts have been Clark and Josephine. You can find us Clark34 and Scary Dog Friend respectively on social media platforms. This episode has been edited by Castrol. You can find us Hollow Compass. Our marketing strategist is Gwen. Who you can find as Glitchy Pixie. And the character designs that you see on the front cover of this show were done by Ribby. You can find as Art by Ribby. Our intro and outro song is Fiction Slash Reality by the band Hypno Sister. Thank you to Sarn for permission to use this song. Our wonderful Kofi members for today are Amelia G, Gwendolyn, Chris Chan J, Bun Hun, Zombie Fighter 89, Antonio Nipples, Kenny Gales, Trash Rat Darcy, and Chaz Romain. Uh, thank you to each of you uh, for your support for this show. Outtakes for this episode can be found on our Kofi page. That's kofi.com slash monsterloverpod. If you have a topic suggestion that you'd like us to discuss, or you're in a predicament with a certain monster you're trying to woo and would like our advice, then you can reach us on Twitter at monsterloverpod or email us at monsterloverpod at gmail.com. You can also use the various comment sections uh, for whatever it is you're listening to this on, whether that be the Spotify mobile comments or the YouTube comments. If you want to keep up to date with us, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at monsterloverpod. And if you'd like to support the show in ways that aren't financial, you can rate us on Spotify so that more people can come and listen to this show, uh, leave a review so people know how great it is, uh, or get a friend to listen. Uh, because, look, we don't know who you know. You know who you know. But we want to know who you know. You know? Thank you so much for listening. Stay safe, monster fuckers. So um, there, this is a choice of pure nostalgia. Wait for a second. Me. We've done Randall from Monsters, Inc. before. Have we? Yes. That was a Kez pick. I'm seeing it. <laughs> I see it. <laughs>